It's Trish with Crafting Cousins Create. Thank you so much for joining me today. We're going to be doing something a little bit different today. I'm going to show you how you can take paper and make a beautiful piece of home decor. We're taking it back to my mixed media days. Now today's video is a collaboration with my sweet friend Lenny over at Crafty Lenny. If you don't know Lenny, I hope that you will follow the link in the description box below. Go over, check her out, tell her that we sent you. We know you're going to love her as much as we do. Lenny does all kinds of DIYs. She loves doing paper projects. She does some farmhouse, some glams, and on Saturday nights she has a live show where she introduces you to a new crafter and they do head-to-head -head crafting. It's so much fun. I know you're going to find something you love with her, so make sure you go check her out. Now, let's hop into today's project. Hey y'all, it's Trish with Crafting Cousins Create. I'm so happy that you joined us today. As you saw, today is a special collaboration with our friend Lainey from Crafty Lainey. We are so happy that she wanted to collaborate with us on this channel. She said that she loves doing paper and we thought that this would be really fun to be able to showcase each other. So I, of course, let her decide the theme of what we were going to do today. And she she wants us to show you how you can use paper to make home decor and I thought that was a great idea it kind of combines both of our channels together we have a DIY channel and we have the paper channel and the whole point of the paper channel was to slow down our projects to be able to show you in real time how we make them because we were getting so many comments from people saying that it just really goes too fast and they would like to be able to see how to do it in real time so that's what we're going to do today we're going to combine those two elements we are going to do a diy using paper we are going to use paper to make some decorations for our home so let's grab some materials and let's get started now i thought it would be fun to use this little sign that i got from dollar tree um i've picked up a couple of these i think they are so cute to use in home decor and I want to take this off. Y'all excuse me a minute. I'm going to have to use my heat gun to get it off. It's being stubborn. There we go. You don't actually have to take those stickers off. I just like having a finished product on the back. Um, and a lot of times I will remove this, but I'm actually going to leave it this time because I think we're going to use it as our hanger. Now, the first thing I'm going to do, and you don't have to do this with this, but I... I love natural wood, but most of the decor in my home is dark wood. So I love using these furniture repair markers. I get them at the Dollar Tree. And if you follow our DIY channel, you see me use these all the time. They don't have them all the time in stock. So when they do have them, I always grab several packs of them because... Yeah, I know that whenever I need them, they may not be in stock. So they are over in the area where they have the automotive and the home tools and stuff like that. So if you ever see them, grab some. Y'all, they're perfect for these small projects. They can be used indoors because they don't have a smell and they don't make a mess. You can see that I'm just doing this right on top of my scrapbook pad. I'm not worried about getting stain on it because this, you know, it's so controlled and it is just absolutely perfect for these small projects like this. Now I have been known <laughs> to actually use them on big projects too, but you know, if you're doing a big project, it's going to take more than one. Now I am going to go ahead and get this on the bottom side too. I have a thing about my projects being finished and looking um, all one way, not you know being one part one way and one part another. 
But now the sides of this is actually pretty dark already. So it's not really taking a lot of that. And I am being careful here because I don't know if you can tell, but this is the back and I'm not going to do the back. I'm only going to do this part here. So I am being careful to keep my marker all in one place. And that's the other thing about these markers is you have such great control with them. So, you know, if you are only a paper crafter and you've never done DIYs and you think that you might like to try a few, then absolutely grab some of these. They are a game changer. Now, I'm going to do this as kind of a pop-up sign. So this sign here measures seven and three quarters, and I'm gonna go by this small one here, nine and a quarter. So I wanna pop up here in the middle. I'm going to take some of this foam board that you get from the Dollar Tree, it's called Ready Board, and I'm going to cut a piece off that is six by seven, I think. I think that's what I'm going to do. Let's go up first, that'll make it a lot easier. So I am going to put a mark Okay, so now we have our two pieces and it's going to go like this. We'll have this right in the center and I think I'm going to like that. So I pulled this paper by Prima. I picked it up at Hobby Lobby and it is $19.99 and Hobby Lobby does not put Prima paper on sale, but I was able to get it when they still had their 40% off coupon. Yes. I'm still angry with them for getting rid of that 40% off coupon, just like I know a lot of you are. But I love this paper. Look how beautiful it is. I actually wanted to cut this out and use it, and I guess I probably could. Let's see. Eh, no. Because nothing really fits. I could do the gray, but I would end up cutting off the roses, and I don't want to do that. I really love that, so I'm going to save that. And you see that you get several papers that are the same, and that's wonderful because then you don't have to worry about which one you're going to use because you know you've got more of them. Now, I was looking at this earlier, and I actually think that this is the piece I want to use for my pop-up, and I am going to incorporate that beautiful butterfly so I'm going to sit it just like that when I cut it. So we'll put this one aside. But now what I'm going back and forth between is whether to use this one for the background or use this one for the background. Ooh, that one actually goes with it better, doesn't it? Yeah. So I think we're going to use this one. I love this paper, y'all. It's so romantic. So shabby chic and so beautiful. So I'm, I'm just grabbing my little Cricut trimmer here. Um, this was one of the gifts that Cricut gave us whenever we became a partner with them. And I really like this trimmer. It's real nice, but I did have to get used to the way it lines up because it lines up differently than um, my other trimmers. So I had to make sure that I knew where it was lining up and see I still yeah, I cut it at an angle. It's okay. We will trim that off. Let's see. There we go. There we go. Now that's perfect. All right. And we will do this piece as well. We are going to trim it off. We'll line it up right there and right there. See, I just have to make sure that I have that line right and... I'm such an impatient person. I have a tendency to just slap it down and go, and that's not a good thing. So, yeah, I have to remember to make sure I do this right. Okay, so now I want to cut this to fit this side. So, I am going to turn this over on here and push it all the way up. Okay, and then I'm just going to put a little mark right there where I need to cut it. 
and I'm not worried if it's a little bit over. I would rather it be a little over um, than under because you can always sand it off, trim it off. There's a lot of ways that you can take care of that. So now we are going to line this up. Okay. Okay. There we go. And now let's see if I can see where I marked it the other way. Yep, right there. Okay. So we are going to line this one up as well. Make sure it's straight. And then we're just going to trim that off. And that gives us our piece that we are going to use on here. Y'all, that is so pretty. And I did cut it big. You can see that it's too big. That's okay. Once we put it on, you can always trim it. You can sand it down. You can make it fit. As I said before, it's better to have it a little too big than not big enough. Now, I want to cut this piece to fit this. So, I want this piece to be right there. Actually, what I think I'm going to do with this one, since I'm going to do it upside down, is I'm going to go ahead and lay it out, make sure that it's perfect, and then I'm just going to use my pencil and trace around it. Now, I know y'all probably wonder why I didn't just measure this and do it. I don't want to waste my paper, so I'm just going to make sure that I have it right. And by laying it down and tracing around it, that is going to give me a better um, cut, I think. Okay? So, let's... There we go. Perfect. We'll set this aside. And now I'm going to flip it the other way. This is going to be this part. And I think that is beautiful. I love this so much. And then this is going to be this part. And we'll put this in the middle. How pretty is that? I already love that so much. Okay, so now let's do our decoupage. I'm going to be using the Mod Podge paper. I actually got this on sale for $2.99 at Hobby Lobby. I guess they were just trying to get rid of it. Um, I don't think it sold as well. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. But it is really thin. Um, I don't particularly like how thin it is. But maybe that's what they, you know, want you to use for paper. I mean, it is said that it's made for paper. So let's just use a little bit of that. We will put some down on our piece that we cut here and wipe that up. Y'all, I make a mess worse than anybody I know. Are y'all messy crafters or is it just me? <laughs> okay, let's clean that up. And now for this, especially since it's thicker, I'm going to take my misting bottle and I'm just going to mist the back of this. And see how it starts bending? It makes it more pliable. So we are going to make sure that we line this up evenly just like that and then we are going to press this down if this was thinner paper I would put saran wrap over this before I um, spread my fingers over it because you can tear thin paper by rubbing it like that trying to get the bubbles out now Mod Podge plaid they sell a brayer and I want one, but I swear to y'all, every time I go to get one, they are sold out. They never have it. So I have not been able to get one. I always see the spot where it's supposed to be, but there's never anything there. I guess that is a pretty popular item or either they just don't do well at keeping their stock in. I'm not sure which one it is. Okay. And now I'm going to cut it this way. I did always want to get it at Hobby Lobby because I was going to use my 40% off coupon. But, of course, they don't have that now. So I've been looking for it at Joann's because Joann's has become my new favorite place. They do have coupons. They have great coupons. So, yeah, I love going to Joann's. Okay, so now I'm going to do this piece. I'm going to put down my Mod Podge on here as well.
Now I'm going to go off camera and I'm going to use my heat gun and dry this. I don't want you guys to have to sit there for this and I'll be right back. So now I'm just going to take my Zacto knife and I am going to trim this out. Now I am going to go ahead and put a coat of Mod Podge on top of this and I'm going to dry it um, and I will go back off camera to dry it. I just, I don't think y'all need to have to watch me do that. It's bad enough that you have to watch me do this part, I'm sure. But um, I like to put a coat on top and this just protects our paper. But now I will tell you, don't put a heavy coat because it can make it bubble up and you don't want that, especially if you are using thinner paper. And you know, if you're using one-sided scrapbook paper, which you could totally use for this because obviously you're only seeing one side, um, that has a tendency to be thinner than this. So you're not going to want to put a thick coat on there because you're going to make this bubble up. Okay. So I can tell y'all, I don't like that paper Mod Podge because it takes longer to dry than my regular Mod Podge. And y'all know I am not a patient person. Okay, so what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to take some of my distressing ink and I'm going to use a distressor here and I'm just going to go around these edges and soften them up some on this white. I'm going to cover that so that you don't see the white and make it just a little bit prettier. Now this takes me back to the days when I used to do mixed media. I love doing mixed media. Have y'all ever done that? I don't, I don't know why I caught out of it. I think, honestly, it was because Kay and I started doing uh, craft shows and, you know, I started making um, DIYs to sell at craft shows. And I just kind of moved away from my mixed media. But I, that was something that I really enjoyed doing. Um, okay, Because this is not taking so well on there, we're going to go back to our Handy Tandy Furniture Repair Marker that I got from the Dollar Tree. And we're just going to fill this in on these sides so that it's not so white and doesn't look so stark. We're going to make it blend more with our stuff at the top of our sign there. Okay, so now I'm just going to take this and all you do is just take your little blotter here and smudge it into your ink and then just kind of go around your edges and kind of go down. I probably should have done this before I put that Mod Podge on. Um, because it's not taking the way that I would like for it to. If I had not put the Mod Podge on, it would have made my edges look so much better. But it's still smudging them out and, and helping. It's, it's aging it up some, and that was really the whole purpose of this. So you can even go up on it some and it just kind of ages it up and makes it blend in better and that's the whole purpose of your blender and i love this i love how it looks so here we go i'm just going to kind of smudge it around some of my corners and make it look older i think i'm also going to do a little bit on here as well we will come around here and just kind of Go around those edges, just kind of blend them in some, make it look older, not so perfect, not all about perfect. How boring would life be if everything and everybody was perfect? I'm just not all about that. <laughs> okay. So now we have our edges done on both pieces and I am loving how this is starting to look. So now we are going to attach this piece right on top of this piece. And I love how that looks. Let me pull it down so you guys can see. And I'm just going to use some hot glue. Now you do have to be careful with hot glue when you're dealing with foam board because you can burn it up um, 
this gun does not get as hot as some of the other guns do and if you've got a multi temp one you may even want to use your low temp but we are going to put some there we are going to center it up and press it down there we go and now that is attached now to decorate the inside of this I pulled several things here. I've got some stickers. These came from the Dollar Tree. You can get some of the prettiest stickers at the Dollar Tree. And then I have these dimensional stickers that I got from Hobby Lobby. They're like little wood stickers and I absolutely love those. So we may use those. I've got some of these pretty butterfly ones. I'm sure we'll use one or two of those. And then I have this paper here this is also from prima and it's 6.99 because it um is smaller obviously it's your six by six sheets and it's got some beautiful cutaways in here and i really like this one that says of all the paths you take in life make sure a few are less traveled and i also like this one that says wherever you go go with all your heart so i'm actually going to cut both of those out and let's just see which one we like the best okay so we've got this one that one doesn't well i don't know it kind of goes with that i honestly think this one goes best okay. what if i put it on something like this and frame it out it'll be pretty but i need to figure out which one of these i'm going to use okay i like this bike I also like these posies. The posies kind of go with the rest of this. I'm not sure that the bike does. We'll pull it off and see. See how cool these are? They're actually pop-up stickers, and they are really cool. What do we think of that? Our little thing here. And put some paper behind it, and then... We could do one of our words here maybe dream and i can stain it too so that it will pop out i do like that let's see if we moved it up and did this on top of it and then did dream down below it what do you guys think all right, I'm still gonna hold this one out. I'm going to take this and I'm going to stain it real quick. I wanna show you just how easy it is to stain. Just use your little marker here and go over the top. These are wood, so they take the stain really well. And this is just going to make it pop out against my paper more because um, this natural wood was blending in with the pretty paper there. So we'll do this. And this one is walnut. Now in this pack, they have the black stain and they have the mahogany stain and they have the walnut stain. Now I want to warn you that if you use the mahogany one, do not use white paint on top of it because it turns the white pink. <laughs> I have found that. Yeah, I like that much better. Okay, so I'm gonna sit that there. And I do think that I want to take some of my pretty paper here what i would really like hmm let's see i've got this stamp i don't have any square stamps all i have are these round ones and that doesn't fit in there i want to see if i cut punch out that's pretty now let's see will that fit inside i bet if I punch the words out, it would. Let's see. I've also got that one in a small one. So let's see if we line that up. I normally would not do this, but I'm going to take out another one of my sheets and see if I can line that up and punch that out. Because, see, you get several of these in here, and I would like to have it small, I think. And 
now we should have look at that how pretty is that and that still gives me my little saying there and i can put that on there and i really like how that looks so i'm actually going to use my um glue stick here and put glue all over the back of this and then attach them together you could also use your double-sided tape. You can definitely use Mod Podge if you want to. Um, I'm not patient enough to use Mod Podge for this one. So I'm just going to put this right here in the middle. And then I think I'm also going to use my little distressor here and see, I'm not going to dip it back into my ink. I'm just gonna use what's on there. And when you touch, see how well this took without the Mod Podge on here? I wish I would have done my other one before I put the Mod Podge on and it would have looked more like that. And I think that is so pretty. Oh, I'm loving that. Okay, I'm still going back and forth about my bicycle. I cannot decide if I want to use the bicycle or not. Let's see if we do it like that. Do that right there. And then, okay, and then put our dream. Maybe that does need to move up a little bit. I like that better there, I think. And then do this here. Okay, so what if we put that there? And then glue this here just so that it's kind of just barely topping over it and then we can put dream right here okay so i think i have about decided to use the bike i like the bike i think it's really cute so i am going to stick it down and it is sticky because it's one of the 3d stickers from the dollar tree it has a little pop-up you can see this part is popped up and so is this part so we are going to stick that there. Our dream is also sticky. So I am going to put this here and stick it down. Now this is not, this is the little piece we made. So I'm just going to use my glue stick for this. I love how these little glue sticks work. Just put it all over the back real good. And then make sure I have my words turned <laughs> the right way. And I am going to, and so I'm going to stick this right here and press it down. Now, I do want to dress this up just a little bit more. You could actually leave this. Oh, you know what? I think I want to use one of our butterflies. There's a butterfly here. What if we pop him out? Let's use this one. These are the 3D butterflies as well. Oops. So we will take that off there and let's just put it right over here and pop him up. Oh, how pretty is that? That gave it so much depth. Okay, let's see. Do we want to do one more or is that enough? So I'm not sure if I want to use another one. I wouldn't want it in that same corner. What about like right there under our flowers? I like that. And there's another little pop-up butterfly. So you can even bend their little wings in and make them pop out more. You bend them up and then bend this side up. And look, it just pops straight out from the thing. I love that. I think it's so pretty. Okay, now to finish this up, I'm going to use some twine. I get this from the Dollar Tree. I think I'm going to use some of this boxwood pick. I got this from Walmart. It was 97 cent. I think it's really pretty. I have took some pieces off playing with it. So we'll, we'll use a couple of pieces of our boxwood pick here. And then I'm gonna use some of this ribbon. I love this ribbon. I get it from the Dollar Tree. Kay calls it my signature ribbon because I use it all the time. So the first thing I'm going to do is take some of my boxwood and I'm going to put it here so that it shows out on the side because I'll have my bow there in the middle. Do it this way and do it over here and that way it covers itself. You can do that and maybe like that. Okay, I may only use one, we'll see. Okay, now I'm gonna take my ribbon 
and I make the simplest bows, guys. So all I do is take a piece and I figure out how big I want my bow to be. So I am going to try this and all I do is just wrap it across itself. Did you see that? All I did was I take one piece and do it this way and one piece and do it this way and see how big I want it to be. And I wouldn't want it any bigger than that. Pinch it into the center and let's check it that way. Yeah, I actually think that may work. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and cut my ribbon. And we'll lay this to the side. And this is going to make it so much easier to work with now. So now I'm just going to take and bend it over itself. Give loop its tails across each other just like that. And then I come here and I start gathering it up in the center or pinching it up in the center. And I just want to leave little tails on this because I don't want them to cover all this pretty work we've got here. Now I'm going to cut me off a piece of this twine just like this. I kind of wrap it into these two fingers and I go up here into the center and I just wrap it around the center two or three times. Um, I normally go three because I like the look of the twine against this. And then I just tie it in a knot and then tie it in a double knot. Do that twice. And then I'm just going to trim off these tails. Okay. And see, that gives you a cute little bow. Now, of course, it's got to be fluffed up. All good bows need fluffing. Kay tells y'all that all the time. So now let's pull this in here. And I may... I don't know if I want to use both of these or not. Let's put that right there. Yeah, I think I do want to use both pieces of the boxwood. So we are going to glue it down. And I do want to glue it close to the top because I don't want it to cover my pretty little flowers there. So we're going to take our hot glue and we'll just put some right here. And stick those ends in there. Just like that. And I'll have one kind of going up there. Just more like that, I guess. So... Let's see, we'll put that there and put this here. Just kind of mash them down. Now, I do not want these tails to cover my picture. So I'm going to fold them in half and I'm going to come pretty far up this and cut these at an angle. This is called dovetailing. And see, it just gives me just a small piece there sticking off the bottom. You may like a longer tail. Typically, I do, but I don't want it covering this up. Okay, I don't like that small tail. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to cut the tail out of this. I'm going to cut that off just like that. We're going to cut it off on this side as well so that I can hide it. And now I think I'm going to like that much better because I don't want to cover those pretty flowers there. Yep, I do. I like that so much better. All right, so now I'm just going to put some hot glue in the center of this. And then stick it right there into this. And we'll fluff up our bow a little bit. And there we go. And I think that's finished. I hope you guys like this. I love how it looks. Um, I will put up a picture of it hanging on the wall so that you can see it and see all the pretty elements to it. I want to thank my sweet friend Lainey for doing this um, collaboration with us today. We appreciate it so much. Y'all make sure that when you finish our video that you go down below into the description box. I'm going to put a link over to Lainey's channel and her video. Y'all go check out what she made with decoupage. See how she uses paper in her home decor. And I hope that I've given you some inspiration. You can see that paper can be used for all kinds of things, not just for journaling, even though we love that. <laughs> we can use it for all kinds of things. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Make sure you pop back on Friday. Kay will be here, and I think she's going to be working on her little mini album. Y'all have a great week. Bye! Thank 
thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you like, we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all and it really does help our channel grow. Bye y'all!